Grace and peace to you and welcome to worship for Sunday, September 6, 2020 from Charleswood United Church in Winnipeg. My name is Michael Wilson. I'm again being supported by my son Benjamin on the other side of the camera as we offer you this time of prayer and praise. And today we join with you as we celebrate the Sacrament of Communion. Communion has many local customs, depending on which congregation and what tradition you may be receiving it in. In some places, it's a very quiet and reflective time. In other places, it's a very boisterous and joyful time. In some places, the communion elements are served to you in your seats. In other places, people come forward and receive the bread and the wine at the front of the church. I was once in an African-American church in Chicago and 2,500 people were served communion in about 10 minutes. Talk about a miracle of loaves and fishes. However you celebrate communion, it always means the same thing. Communion is a sign of God's grace. A reminder, if you will, with symbols of how it is that everything God gives us God gives us freely, and God gives us abundantly. We do not earn or deserve or gain God's love. It is a gift. And we gather around the communion table because we need to say thank you for that gift. So we're glad you're with us today, and we hope, no matter how you choose to observe it, that you will join us in this time of communion. As our opening hymn said, we are one. And we are one even though we are apart as we gather at Christ's table today. Let us worship together. Shall be without blemish. 
a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall absorb it as a perpetual ordinance. Here are the readings. Sourdough bread. If I had to think of a symbol of the early days of this pandemic, I would probably say sourdough bread. In March, as schools and businesses shut down, we were told to stay home amidst a yeast shortage and an abundance of unexpected free time. Many of us undertook the slow process of making sourdough bread. Making sourdough bread, as those who attempted it soon learned, requires time and patience. First, you add water to flour, which starts a fermentation reaction with the wild yeast that is naturally present in the flour. Then you have to keep feeding fresh flour to your starter every day to keep this fermentation going. After a few days, the starter gets bubbly and eventually it can be used to make bread. Delicious sourdough bread. In today's scripture reading, we heard about the Israelites being instructed to eat a type of bread that is pretty much the opposite of sourdough bread, unleavened bread. This is bread without any kind of yeast, flatbread. This is bread for busy people, people on the move. This is not the bread for people who have time to plan and nurture a sourdough starter for days in advance. This is the bread of haste. This hurried, unleavened bread feels like an appropriate symbol for the times we find ourselves in now at the beginning of September, six months into pandemic living. After going through lockdown and gradual reopening, we are now standing at the edge of a big milestone, the start of a new school year. After a six month long spring break, families are preparing to send their children back to school. Even though we've had six months to plan for this day to eventually come, our knowledge of the virus has continued to evolve throughout this time, which 
left many of the decisions about the return to school to the last minute, and now it feels rushed like unleavened bread. We pray now that the decisions that our leaders have made will allow educators to create an environment that can nourish our children. We pray that all teachers, staff, and students will be healthy. We pray that children will find a way to play safely and joyfully with their peers in the coming weeks. We pray that this return to school might shrink the education gap that has worsened during school closures between the students who are privileged and the students who come from struggling homes. Today's scripture reading from the book of Exodus is many things. It is a recipe for ceremonial preparation of a lamb. It is instructions for a commemorative festival that continues to this day within Judaism, the celebration of Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. It is also the start of the conclusion of the story of the 10 plagues in Egypt that convinced Pharaoh to release the Israelites from slavery. And we know that after this Bible story, the Israelites still had to cross the Red Sea and wander in the wilderness for 40 years before they reached the promised land. We too are at a midpoint. Nothing could have prepared us for what we are facing now, just like nothing really prepared the Israelites for their escape from Egypt. All they had was the word of God and these bizarre instructions given through Moses and Aaron about preparing a meal and smearing blood on doorposts. They were also given instructions on how to eat this meal in haste, hurriedly, with their loins girded and their sandals on. Now, if the sermon was happening in person, I could ask everyone in the room to raise their hand if they know what it means to gird their loins. Since this is on YouTube, I'll say instead, leave a comment below and let me know if this is your first time hearing the phrase, gird your loins, explained. So in biblical times, men wore long tunics, essentially like ankle length dresses. And when they were preparing for battle or for other hard labor, they tied up their tunics in a specific way so they could have a better range of motion. Hence, girding their loins. In today's Bible reading, God tells the Israelites to eat their unleavened bread quickly with their loins girded, preparing for action. They must get ready to go, get ready to face something hard. We too have to face something hard in the week and months to come. And although we might feel unprepared for what lies ahead, we have the same tool at our disposal for girding our loins for the challenges to come as the ancient Israelites did, the Word of God. Today, we will celebrate communion, remembering that the Last Supper Jesus ate with his disciples was the Passover meal. As we hear the familiar words of this sacrament in these strange times, we can draw strength from all the times we have celebrated communion together as a church. We can draw strength from remembering Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We can draw strength from reflecting on the times our ancestors in the faith celebrated communion in the midst of war and peace, illness and health, fear and comfort. None of us has a tried and true recipe for how to navigate these unprecedented times. In times of uncertainty, the word of God speaks hope and strength into our lives. As we pray for our daily bread, we trust that God will provide the bread we need for today. Sourdough bread, unleavened bread, the bread of life. God is present in our lives, nourishing us, 
and sustaining us through the wilderness and into the promised land. This is Christ's table. It is not yours. It is not mine. This is Christ's table. It does not belong to congregation or denomination or tradition. This is Christ's table. And so Christ alone invites us to gather around this table and to share these gifts of the earth and to know that in so doing, the risen Christ is in our midst. This is Christ's table. So it is not for you nor me to turn anyone away. For at Christ's table, everyone who Christ loves is welcome. So if you've been to this table more times than you can count, or if you have never set foot in a church, no matter where you live or how you live, who you love, what language we speak, what traditions, customs, and cultures you adhere to. You are welcome, for this is Christ's table, and no one is turned away. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. Holy God, our loving Creator, close to us as breathing, and distant as the farthest star. We thank you for your constant love for all you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, for the calling forth of your church for its mission in the world, gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit, we offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices with the entire family of your faithful people everywhere. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, as sisters and brothers in faith, we recall anew these words and acts of Jesus Christ. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. 
Jesus took a cup and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. We remember Christ's promise not to drink of the fruit of the vine again until the heavenly banquet at the close of history. And we say boldly what we believe, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table, that our eyes may be opened, and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. We join together with the words Jesus taught as we sing. So it is we remember that on the night our Lord Jesus was handed over to suffering and an unjust death, how he gathered with friends in an upper room. He took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and shared it with them saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. On the same night he took a cup of wine and after giving thanks, he shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of a new and everlasting covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink from this cup, remember me. These are the gifts of God. They are given for the people of God. All things are now ready. the bread of life, and the cup of blessing. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen.